Okay, this is example two, a convex lens again, but this time the uh, object will be placed within the focal length. So if you watch video one, uh, you know there was no take two. Uh, we'll be sending that uh, video to the hair club for men to see if um, they can do something for me. Uh, we'll try to uh, have a little higher production value on, uh, on this one. So in this case, it's all very similar, um, but there's a couple of little things you gotta do differently in this sort of scenario. So here we have, again, an uh, object that is 1.5 centimeters high. Uh, the is placed three centimeters from a converging uh, lens or a convex lens. So that is, uh, again, the distance away from the lens it is. So it's three centimeters. Uh, and the focal length this time is 12. Uh, again, this will remain positive. Anytime there's a convex lens, it's, uh, it's gonna be a positive F. And like in the last example, we're looking for the uh, height of the image and we're looking for the distance where the image uh, would appear to your eye when you're looking at it through, uh, through the lens. So to set up the lens diagram, we do something uh, very similar. We draw, I'll do it down here, principal plane again, which is just sort of the line that would cut through the middle of the lens. This is again a diverging lens. I'll try to draw it relatively large. Again, your, how you draw that is, it, it does not make any difference here. Uh, and so I know that the focal length this time is 12 centimeters. So it's, uh, it's longer this time. So again, I'll make something up and say, you know, about this far is 12 centimeters, even though it isn't. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's gonna be the same on both sides. Again, if the lens is uh, symmetric, uh, and it doesn't matter, we could draw it all on this side and do it that way, but convention is we do it from left to right here. Uh, in this case though, the object is only three centimeters from the lens. So you'll see it's inside the focal length. That's what makes this different here uh, in this case. And this is the sort of scenario that you do when uh, you want to uh, use a magnifying glass uh, to solve mysteries or um, you know burn ants or whatever you're doing with magnifying glasses uh, um, you know reading the the paper when you're old so three centimeters again uh, I'm gonna make something up and say that's just here uh, for ease sake although it, it, that's not a very good uh, uh, scale there but that's about we'll call that three centimeters and uh, the height here again is 1.5 centimeters, but the important point is that that is, uh, in this example, is that this is within the, the focal length here. So you couldn't start this drawing in this scenario and draw, call this three centimeters. You have to be within the, what we're calling 12. So uh, in this case, we do uh, two lines again, but it's a little bit different. And we start off uh, similarly in that we draw a straight line parallel to the lens and I think I said in the last video that it gets to the center and then through refraction it gets bent through the focal length. Uh, that's not technically true. Nothing magic happens uh, in the center of a lens. It actually gets refracted twice. Once it hits the, the lens here, it uh, enters the glass, it gets refracted and then it gets refracted again when it comes out from the glass into the air. But uh, for all intents and purposes for our diagrams, we can just say that's gonna be the final uh, destination will be the focal length here. And so we usually just draw the picture from the center there, but there's nothing magic uh, about that. All right, the next uh, one we do, because we can't go through the focal length backwards like we did before, what we do is we pretend that we could and we start at the focal length here and uh, go through the top of the, again, we're pretending here. So I will uh, sort of draw this up like that. And then this is where it would really go. Uh, so the light shining so, uh, from off of this object would come at this angle, hits the lens, gets refracted twice, of course. Uh, but now it comes out in a straight line parallel here. Uh, again, opposite case, parallel goes to the focal length. I imagine it was going this way. Um, it would be parallel and then through the focal length. Now, you can tell here these lines aren't gonna cross like they did in the first example. Um, and so there's not gonna be any image on this side. Uh, and this is the difference in this scenario. This is why when you look through a magnifying glass, when you use a lens as a magnifying glass, actually there's no difference between the lens in this uh, question um, and the convex lens in the other question other than their focal lengths. Um, but why it is that uh, you can use a magnifying glass, you have to hold it up close, is because you have gotta be within this distance here. So how you, uh, 
you draw these lines back is you say, okay, well, if your eye is over here, you're gonna trace this. This is gonna look like it's coming straight back. So draw yourself a dotted line backwards as if the uh, light was imaginarily going straight through the lens like so. And then also, since the, the light looks like it's coming from this direction because it got bent, your eye will trace it back along the same line. I'll try to do that as good as I can. Back this way. And where these cross is where the image will appear. And notice it looks like it's sort of behind the lens if your eye is over here. Uh, and it's bigger, just like you, uh, when you magnify something, that's, that's the way it looks. So in this case, that's the object, and this is the image. And so that's how you draw a lens diagram when uh, it's a convex lens, but the object is within the focal length here. And uh, this is probably something you're all familiar with, with using a magnifying glass. This is how it's mostly used. You don't usually use a magnifying glass as in uh, example one but telescopes and other things do use uh, a convex lens that way. So let's do the math and see what we get. Now note that this is on the same side, the image is on the same side as the object, so uh, we're gonna get uh, uh, our answer for the, the uh, image distance will, there'll be something different about it than from the first example, and you'll notice too it's bigger, which a magnification should be in, in, in this scenario, so we'll see that when we do the, uh, do the uh, math there. So first off, one over F equals one over do, or I'll call it right, do and do, that's what I said, plus one over di, but again, you can interchange those. Um, so we'll put in the numbers, it's one over 12 centimeters, 12.0 equals one over, uh, what did I say, three centimeters here, minus one over, uh, sorry, plus one over di here. Uh, again, we'll subtract off the whole fraction on this side. Uh, and what we do to one side, we must do to the other. And we get 1 over 12 uh, minus 1 over 3. And I'm ignoring my units here. Remember, this is uh, no take 2 equals 1 over di. Now, you, again, you can turn these into fraction or decimal, sorry, if you'd like, but uh, it's better to find a common denominator for these two things. And so the common denominator in this case is gonna be one over 12 minus four over 12. One over three is the same as four over 12 equals one over di. Uh, we get one minus four is minus three over 12 equals one over di. Let's cross multiply that. We get uh, minus three di equals 12. Divide out the minus three, divide out the minus three, and we're left with the distance to the object is minus four centimeters in this case. So the minus tells us that the image appears on the same side of the lens as the object does. So that's a difference from the first example. So go back and look at that uh, if uh, you didn't catch that it was a positive number in the first one and the image appeared over here on this side. So that's what that minus sign means in this case. Uh, sometimes, you know, we've talked about minus being opposite, you know, up and down and all that stuff. In this case, a minus distance image means it's on the same side of the lens or the opposite side as your eye in this case. Uh, we'll do the height then or the size of whatever the size this is, what the magnification would be. It's HI over HO again, equals minus DI over DO. That is going to be HI over, uh, the height of the object was 1.5 centimeters, equals minus minus four centimeters, which is just really plus four, right? Uh, and the distance to the object was three centimeters in the first place. Cross multiply that. We get uh, three HI equals four times 1.5 is six. I don't need my calculator for this example. My brain's a little foggy. I, I'm embarrassed for the, the, last, uh, the last one we did. Uh, I should have been able to figure that out. Uh, anyway, divide out three on both sides and we're left with HI 
of the height of the image will be two centimeters. Notice it's a positive this time because it's right side up. And notice two centimeters is bigger than the actual object of 1.5 centimeters. Again, just like a, a magnifying glass uh, would do. So positive uh, image height here means that it's uh, right side up as opposed to upside down like it was in the, in the first one. Images that appear on this side uh, of the lens, same size as the object, are called virtual images and they will be right side up. Uh, I didn't mention this in the first video, but uh, an inverted image is called a real image because you can actually project that on a screen uh, like at the movie theater or something like that. All right, on to example three where the production value is going to be uh, that much better that uh, we'll be up for an Oscar.